Your Honor, I'm from a tiny person's advocacy group, and I have here in my hand a motion to dismiss. Does somebody need their dishes rinsed? Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about Justin Roiland again. Or more specifically, I want to catch up on what has happened since my last video. Because I never expected to make a second video, or at least one like this. But first, let's fill you in. In January of 2023, it came to light that Justin Roiland, a cartoonist best known for co-creating Rick and Morty, Koala Man, and Solar Opposites, had been charged with domestic battery, and false imprisonment. What's important to note is these allegations have been around since August of 2020, but were not public knowledge until earlier this year. His trial was scheduled, was being the key word, for April 27th, 2023. When the allegations came up, Justin bladed not guilty. However, it was basically the beginning of the end for his career. Adult Swim promptly fired Justin, but announcing they would replace his characters with other voice actors. Fingers crossed, it's Tracy Morgan. Later, Hulu followed suit, and Justin himself resigned as CEO of Squanch Games, a video game studio he co-founded. In spite of this, things took an unexpectedly different turn. Recently, Justin's charges were dropped. Now, I think it's important to clear up a few things, as there has been a teeny tiny bit of misinformation going around. First off, Justin was not found innocent or not guilty, as some people are claiming. The case was thrown out by the prosecution, not the judge, due to lack of evidence. If you're unaware, the United States legal system works on something called reasonable doubt, meaning that justice can only be served or a case can only be brought to trial if there is enough evidence or a standard of proof. After all, everybody deserves a fair trial. With cases like domestic abuse, harassment, and violence, such a technicality can be especially common, as the crimes can be very hard to prove after a certain point. As Bojack Horseman showed us, it could lead into he said, she said territory. Beyond that, dismissing the case is not the same as exoneration. With this type of thing, Double jeopardy does not exist. Justin can always be tried again one day, if for argument's sake, more evidence piles up or more witnesses come forward. However, it doesn't stop there. People have been angry over Justin's attitude towards the situation. After the charges were dismissed, Justin himself posted a statement on Twitter with the caption, Justice. The statement read, in full, I have always known that these claims were false and I never had any doubt this day would come. I'm thankful that this case has been dismissed, but at the same time, I'm still deeply shaken by the horrible lies that were reported about me during this process. Most of all, I'm disappointed that so many people were so quick to judge without knowing the facts, based solely on the word of an embittered ex, trying to bypass due process and have me quote unquote cancelled. That it may have succeeded, even partially, is shameful. However, now that the legal case has ended, I'm determined to move forward and focus both on my creative projects and restoring my good name. This statement has made many people mad for a variety of reasons. I will get to my thoughts in a moment. The biggest is probably the fact that the investigation opened up new allegations against Justin. Among them was allegations of fans saying he had DM'd them when they were underaged sending them lewd messages, or using connections through places such as New York Comic Con to have negative encounters with fans or to pick them up. That was when he wasn't drunk to attend such meetings. Nine times out of ten, he would cancel at the last moment, saying he was sick or one of his dogs were. In fact, two of his accusers were musician Ali Gortz and tattoo artist Veronica Sweeney. Ali Gortz herself tweeted, I'll say more later. For now, I'll just share the types of quote-unquote funny DMs Justin Roiland would send me. Posted and deleted this last night because I was worried about any backlash. But this dude made me, someone who wrote a Rick and Morty concept album, never watch his show again. Also, this is just a disclaimer, but please don't harass either of these women or any other people that come forward, please. Veronica Sweeney herself said, 
So with all the Justin Roiland allegations coming out, I thought I'd share my DMs from 2014. Didn't think much of it at the time, but now with all these girl stories, it feels icky. Covering eyes emoji. I didn't end up hanging out with him, but wonder what would have happened if I did. After Rick and Morty hired more female staffers in season 3, one of them alleged that he sent inappropriate texts. Probably the biggest revelation for many fans outside of this was the fact that Justin himself never creatively worked on Rick and Morty after season 3. Not to mention that Dan Harmon and Justin haven't spoken to each other in years due to having a falling out around the time season 3 was in production. No wonder you're constantly fighting with each other and behind schedule. What? Nothing. Yeah, this seems prophetic. Many staffers claimed they had never met Justin himself, e in person or over Zoom. And for his former colleagues, if they heard news about him, it was always negative. Which, I hate to say it, but I don't think that's exactly incorrect. Whenever Adult Swim releases an episode of Rick and Morty, they also release a behind-the-scenes feature, where the crew talk about the episode, analyze it, and provide some background. Usually, this is through YouTube or on-demand features. While Dan Harmon had a large presence in these clips, Justin stopped appearing after a certain point. Even if he was the show's co-creator, Alton came out for public appearances and voiced a good chunk of main and side characters, especially in a show where improv is a staple. According to those who have come forward, especially with an article through The Hollywood Reporter, after season 3, Justin's only contribution was voice work, recording from a studio in his basement. Which, to be fair, this is extremely common with long running shows. Many voice actors don't step foot in the studio for one reason or another, be it they don't have enough time or travel is a bother. Going back to BoJack Horseman, Paul F. Tompkins, the voice actor for Mr. Peanut Butter, said that he never met Amy Sedaris, the voice of Princess Carolyn, as the show was produced in Los Angeles and she lived in New York. Just, if you're ever going to become a voice actor, it's good practice to have access to recording equipment on your own end. Meanwhile, it's also common for creators to settle down, especially with long-running shows. But King of the Hill and Family Guy, both creators voiced the main characters. With King of the Hill, Mike Judge voiced Tank and neighbors like Boomhauer or Ted Wasana song. And with Seth MacFarlane, it's easier to say who he hasn't voiced. However, both stepped down from their duties as creatives, or became more hands-off. Maybe they got to be too busy, maybe they wanted to pursue more opportunities. Point is, it happens, and Justin is not the first, nor will he be the last. Like Justin, Seth himself co-created other cartoons, but would say American Dead, he has been vocal that his only real presence has been voiced Voicing Stan and Roger, and going to table reads. Justin differed in this regard because whenever he did decide to go to the office, he would make it hell for everyone involved. On the days when he did show up, he would goof off playing with action figures, or nerf guns, or derailing pitches. Sometimes he would bring high-profile stars to see the Rick and Morty studio, among them Kanye West, The Impractical Jokers, and Riley Reed. Fun fact, apparently Riley Reed gave them a succulent. That's nice. One staffer even commented they would only know Justin was in the office if they heard the sound of dogs, as Justin was especially fond of them, naming the character Jerry Smith after one of his beloved pets, or he would play with a remote control car with a microphone attached, or use binoculars to observe the other crew members while meetings were in progress. Part of me wonders if knowing what we know now, is Storylord's creator meant to be the show's version of Justin, or the crew making fun of him, just as Storylord himself was meant to make fun of Dan Harmon? Is this your office or your apartment? Why does it smell like you sleep here? You're my creator, why are you pathetic? Several female staffers have said that his shows foster toxic environments for women. When Rick and Morty, many found it odd that most female writers would not last beyond a single season. Heidi Butler, a former production assistant for Solar Opposites and Rick and Morty, spoke out against the team for a homophobic joke, and as of now, hasn't been able to land a job. Regardless, I think it's important to note that Justin's case was not about the 
the DMs or the workplace allegations, but rather domestic abuse and kidnapping. You can still be innocent of a crime or get off on a technicality and not be a good person at the end of the day. For example, John Quirk Falusi, creator of Red and Stimpy, has many allegations against him of harassment and grooming and even possession of CSAM. But he wasn't fired over the lewd behavior. He was fired for being a demanding boss who could not get an episode out on time. What got him fired and replaced was when he wrote a letter to Nickelodeon saying that, in not so many words, the episodes would be ready when he said they'd be ready, and they would just have to deal with it. Now, time for my thoughts on the issue. Several people have asked me to come forward and retract my first video, be it apologizing or privatizing it. I might get a lot of hate for this, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I still stick with my original opinion, to some degree. After all, that video itself wasn't as focused on Justin, it was on discussing the role between art and the artist, especially when the artist turns out to be a terrible person. With each passing day, it's like a new scandal comes out of the animation industry. Am I still allowed to watch Fairly Odd Parents, a beloved show for my childhood, simply because Butch Harmon himself is an arrogant blowhard? who can't handle criticism. Yeah, maybe Dr. Rip Studwell was more on the nose than we initially thought. And let me just clear up something else, because I have gotten a couple comments about this. I wasn't trying to say it's bad that Butch Hartman was a Christian. Rather, he used his religion as a tool to steal money from fans, as he did with his Kickstarter for Oaxis. Highgate Rules can tell you more about everything he's done, go watch his videos. But I will say that regardless, Justin's post makes me angry because of how smug it comes off. He was only dismissed for this one thing. One thing. Well, technically two things, but trial, I mean, I'm sorry. This doesn't change anything, especially considering everything else we know. What about the DMs? What about inappropriate behavior? What about the workplace allegations? Multiple people have come forward, not just one or two. I don't think it's fair to argue it's a campaign to take him down or Photoshop. What do you say about the fact that things actually got so bad that Cartoon Network the parent company of Adult Swim had to launch their own investigation into his behavior, or things got to be so bad with Justin and Dan that they needed to bring in a mediator. Maybe he was innocent of this one crime, and it was just a vengeful acts like he's claiming. Maybe it's more complicated than we think, who knows. Still, altogether, this does not exonerate him. Not in the legal sense or in the familial sense. And like I said at the beginning, he can still be charged with that once again if new evidence does come forward. Beyond that, the post actually does hurt a lot of causes when you really start to think about it. Raisin victims, not just female victims because men can be victims too, are afraid to come out and name their abusers is precisely due to lack of evidence. For many victims, statute of limitations might not even even be an issue. After a certain point, harassment or assault can be very hard crimes to prove, even if they did indeed happen. Not to mention the public backlash that comes with it, sometimes just speaking out against that person. If the abuser is found not guilty or the case is thrown out due to lack of evidence, that victim might be blamed as making it up for attention or money or trying to besmirch somebody's good name, especially if the accused is a high-profile person. Person. And yes, obviously some victims make it up, but for the vast majority, it just isn't true. Everybody hates those people who make up false allegations because it just makes it harder for actual victims to be believed. So to me, if Justin did indeed commit the crimes, it's like he's mocking the person or the people he hurt for not dotting the I's and crossing the T's, or for not having a more competent lawyer. And if he didn't, it's like he's encouraging another victim them out there to stay silent. Altogether, this is why I can't provide my own apology. Maybe if we were only talking about the trial and there were no other allegations, I wouldn't mind saying, yeah, maybe I was too quick to jump on the bandwagon, but with the mountain load of negative press, I just find it harder to forgive. Besides, there were better ways to phrase this message, guilty or not. For example, he could give his side of the story and or 
never own up to what he did. In my original video, I brought up Dan Harmon, Rick and Morty's other creator, as an example of a terrible person who has several allegations but is still gainfully employed. I got comment after comment about him, and this inspired me to do further research. I hate to say it, but Dan Harmon is how you redeem yourself in the court of public opinion. Megan Gans, I really hope I'm saying that right, a writer for Harmontown in Community, alleged in 2018 that he developed feelings for her, and when she did not return the affection, he began to harass her. And overall, he made his workplaces a highly uncomfortable place for her. What made it worse was Dan Harmon is considered one of the hardest creators to work with due to him being such a perfectionist. However, Dan Harmon, to his credit, opened up about being a terrible person who made many mistakes he knows he can't take back. He apologized on his podcast and in front of a huge crowd, and actually brought his accuser to tears. She eventually forgave him, and Megan herself said she appreciated the gestures, accepted them as sincere, and even called it a masterclass in how to apologize. And as far as I know, she was not blacklisted for speaking out. She's still in the industry. If you have Apple TV+, Plus, please check out Mythic Quest. Altogether, while I don't support Dan Harmon's earlier behavior, I must provide credit where credit is due. But I do think one thing is clear. Justin is not going to be hired back by any major network, at least for the time being. In fact, considering stuff like John K, I would not be surprised if Hulu and or Adult Swim wanted to be rid of him for a while, but due to his popularity, couldn't find a way to do so. But we'll just have to see how things play out. However, much like my original video, I want to talk about another controversial topic. In this case, the idea of creators who are hard to work with, but still pull out really great work. Should we support such creators, especially say Roland who was known by and far as a quirky person? I'll leave that question up to you. Comment down below. However, I must make this very clear. In my comment section, DMs, whatever, be civil. You are entitled to your own opinion, but that does not mean you can't be polite about it. Don't harass anybody, not on YouTube or any other platform. And don't harass any of the accusers. I'm serious. 